Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be painting up this little guy. Um, I really love the look of the Griffhound models and uh, kind of getting stoked to getting them all painted up. So um, getting the Griffhound all painted up would be cool. Uh, I'm going to do more of a traditional kind of lion scheme for the body. So lion colors and all of that. But for the neck, I'm going to do like a kind of a metallic-y um, kind of blue or green uh, or like a peacock type feathering to them. And then of course we'll do the face and the beak and all of that. So um, yeah, just some kind of cool visual interest on the board to break up that standard Stormcast scheme. Uh, scheme. So really looking forward to seeing them done. So uh, let me get them all painted up. I'm going to paint them up in the Corax white so that I've got a really nice strong foundation for all the colors and the detail that I want to do. Okay, so we've got our Griff Hound all primed up in Corax white, and the next step for us is going to be um, to do the metallics. Now, the metallics that uh, we're going to start off with is Fulgurite Copper. Now, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a weird stage. Uh, what I'm looking for is a kind of bluey kind of peacock feathers um, over the, the kind of the neck and, and head and face and all of that. And so I chose Fulgurite Copper because it's it's essentially a little bit of uh, gold, clearly, uh, a little bit of bronze, and it's got a little bit of a silver kind of kind of element to it as well. So it's quite it's quite bright. So wherever the feathers are here, uh, and that'll include the um, uh, you know behind the neck and under the the ear feathers and all that other stuff, uh, I'm going to do in the Fulgurite Copper. Okay, so with the Fulgurite Copper done, uh, you can see here that I went over the, um, the ear feathers and just the top of the head, because I want this nice uh, blend to happen there. Now, we've just got a couple details that are going to be in Retributor Armor, which of course is a, a much warmer, much uh, deeper gold. And um, so those are going to be uh, fairly straight up, nice, easy, and very small. Um, I'm going to be pre-painting the small details here on the uh, kind of shooting comet of Sigmar here. And then I'll do the same on the other side. And then with the Retributor Armor, I'm just going to do this central kind of plate that's on his chest. Now I know the golds are going to be very similar, but we're going to use Fulgurite Copper as a highlight uh, to the Retributor Armor. Okay, so with the two types of gold down, uh, we're going to move on to the silver. Uh, I'm going to start with our base of lead belcher. And um, I mean, th despite the fact that this is a, you know, a, a, a you know, a small F fantasy model, uh, it uh, doesn't have a lot of um, kind of silvery metallics on it. So it's going to be pretty quick. The piece that we're going to go over first, of course, is this harness, the metal part of the harness. There's two parts. There's a, uh, there, there's a leathery part. And then there is a uh, kind of a metallic-y part here, kind of a steel type part. So we'll go around, we'll uh, make sure that that band part of the harness is done. And then in addition, we'll do the, the spike coming out of the front here. And we'll also do these side pieces here. like that. Okay, so we got the metallics all done. Uh, we're going to finish off the harness now with Steel Legion Drab, and that'll just be that leather uh, strapping around the harness. Now you can tell I've been a little sloppy with my painting here, uh, and I'm going to be especially sloppy here. Uh, and all I'm doing is, is just getting that base coat uh, down, uh, and I'm not too worried about going over onto the, the flesh part of the hound here, uh, simply because I'm going to be covering that those other pieces uh, in uh, in color as well, so I'm not really I'm not really too stressed out about it. Next up, we'll do the beak in Averland Sunset. It's a nice kind of uh, kind of muted, little bit of a pale yellow, um, but it's not hyper bright. Like it's not like a fluorescent yellow or anything like that. So uh, I think it's a really cool color. I think it adds a little bit of extra texture uh, to two things like this, this this type of beak here. So um, now I feathered, uh, no pun intended, I kind of feathered in the paint a little bit up at the top and I'm just going to continue to do that uh, just to have it so they kind of blend into each other and it's been done around the face. So 
So we want some decent coverage in there, but we still want to have that back and forth going on with the feathers uh, from the rest of the head. Now for the body, because we want a lion-esque kind of look to it, uh, I'm going to do the lion flesh, skin, fur, whichever, with the Tau Light Ochre. And um, nice color too, actually. It's uh, It's got this nice gold kind of attribute to it, but it's got a, it's kind of that mix between yellow, brown, and, and kind of a, uh, a non-metallic gold. And it's, uh, I think it's a good complementary color to the rest of our model here. So this is now where I'm going to spend a little bit of extra detail and you can see that it's a little bit easier just to paint uh, around coming from the larger surface uh, and you can kind of work your way around your, your details and it just tidies everything up really, really nicely. All right, so being super careful, being super tidy, I'm going to work my way around, uh, kind of re-edging everything back in and I'm going to do about no, probably two thin coats of this here. I want to make sure I get, you know, a decent amount of coverage over that white. Uh, but I'll go all the way up to the tail, the feet, everything. So I'll continue on. All right, so the base coating's all done. I also went ahead and did up the uh, base here to match the rest of the army. And um, I'm going to be washing next, but uh, I just want to make a quick comment on how nice the model actually looks. It's got lots of character and kind of depth in there, and we're just going to accentuate that with the wash. Uh, so I'll use my um, grubby uh, tub of wash here. Uh, this is a custom wash that I use. It is 25% Agrax or Shade, 25% uh, Nuln Oil, and it is 50% regular everyday uh, floor wax. And um, uh, the, floor, the floor wax adds as a, as a big kind of, um, as a flow aid to, to, our, to our wash here. Um, I find the GW washes tend to be a bit thick and you can see that uh, it runs in uh, quite nicely there. Now, what I want to do, because I'm going to be uh, going after the feathers here in, I'm going to tint them kind of a bluey color. I want a kind of a, a peacocky uh, kind of coloring to it. So I want to make sure that I don't have too much in there as we are going to be washing this again uh, with, uh, with some glaze colors. So uh, just want to make sure that we don't uh, pile it up right into those feathers like that for example. So you just use your brush and kind of wick it away. All right so we can see right now that we've got the wash uh, the wash brought out all kinds of crazy highlights for us to see and it low lighted low lit low lighted low lit all the stuff that we were looking for. Uh, so the next step now we're going to brighten up the copper around the neck with fulgurite copper again and I'm going to do a, um, a dry brush. Now this is going to be a very a light dry brush. So um, I'm going to get a bit of paint on my uh, fuzzy no good brush here and I'm going to wipe it off on this uh, paper towel basically until there's nothing left and then I'm going to go in here and just kind of pull down on the major pieces on here. So you'll see that it's, it's got lots of pigment in that paint. Um, but we don't want to go over any of that kind of recessed uh, shading in there. So we'll just give it a nice light dry brush. And you see it really just kind of pops that back out again. Next up, we'll continue on with our metallics here. We'll take our Rune Fang Steel and we'll just go over the pieces that were done in Lead Belcher. Now there's not a whole lot on the model, obviously. So this will go uh, fairly quickly here. And so all I'm going to do with my Runefang steel is just go back over top of some of the key metal areas and parts where there's a bolt, I'm just going to touch. And then on the high side or the closest side, kind of the side that faces the light, I'm going to go and just give it a little bit of a, a touch on both the edges there. So we leave that depth in the middle. And then the rings will uh, catch up on as well. We'll just work our way around. Uh, we've also got the spike here up front, which we need to make sure that we sharpen up a little bit as well. Looking good. For all of the Sigmar icons, uh, we're going to use Retributor Armor, and I'm just going to go over the majors of those colors there. And it's primarily just going to be 
uh, here on the symbols themselves. So uh, uh, again, I'll leave that uh, low light wherever possible. And on the chest piece here, I'll just tap that up with a little bit of extra color as well. And you can see once they're washed, they're very uh, different colors from the fulgurite there. So having finished off the metallics, uh, we're going to now go in and do the Avaland Sunset on the beak. And we're just going to restore a little bit of that kind of off yellow uh, color here. Now you can see wherever it's serrated and sharp, I'm just going to go in and striate like that. I'll do it at the bottom as well. And it just gives you a couple extra little bits of visual uh, texture to it there. On the long part of the peak, I'll just do a swipe down like that, a little bit on the cheeks here, a little bit around the eyes. Uh, and so by just kind of striating, it looks a little bit rougher. Uh, and it also looks a little bit more uh, natural, a little bit more like a living, uh, living thing. So we'll just go back in over the Averland sunset that we had before and you want to really just make sure that you get the the actual profile of the beak so that when you hold it away from you you can see that that is in fact a beak there nice so this way we get a little bit of the color uh, a variation but it's still a nice kind of similar tonal range as the rest of the of the Griffhound here for the body, uh, we're going to go back in with our towel light ochre and we're going to take advantage of all that awesome wash, those kind of low lights and highlights and all of that. And we're going to overbrush back in a good chunk of the highlight. Now you can see just how nice of a job that wash does. So we're just going to go in and go after those major uh, kind of highlights there where the wash has, uh, we'll leave it where the wash is settled in. But we'll start pulling out all that beautiful uh, kind of raised detail there. And you can just kind of follow with your eye what it looks like. So uh, you'll see that I block it in. It's a little messy at the beginning. And then I just kind of keep working those areas in until I'm happy with the way it turns out. Now, as we're trucking along at the back, you can see that despite the fact that I tried to get it together and the fact that I used plastic weld and all that, um, some wash still went into the crack there. So what we can do is it's on a nice spot. There's a little bit of highlight there. So all I'm going to do is make sure that I do end up through my travels here, just kind of covering up, just kind of covering that up. Okay, so we can see that the skin has really kind of come together. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of a glaze to it, a little bit of a, a gloss, uh, but I'm going to hit the whole model with Purity Seal after. Uh, so I think, you know, it just, it just reduces it down, but we get to keep all that beautiful low lighting there as well. Now, with the Griff Hounds, you can change up your base color. I like the Tau Light Ochre because it's got kind of a... It's kind of a lion thing. It's a little more traditional griffin type thing. But as far as the bird side, the the kind of the eagle, the um, you know the, the different kind of birds of prey, uh, you can get a little bit creative. And I like like lots of variety. But um, in this case here, I'm going to use the Gilman Blue. Uh, but we've also got Blood Letter, and there's you know we can go through all the different glazes, and we can tint the bird kind of you know torso and up part of the bird now. I'll take away blood letter, uh, but uh, just just mentioning that we can actually have them, you know, all over the place. So uh, with this, we're going to take some Lamian medium, and we're going to cut it half and half with uh, Gilliman blue. Now I'm not a big fan of mixing paints in general, but the effect we get from this is is pretty top shelf. So uh, I'll just move our little friend off to the side for a sec. Uh, so I'm going to take my palette, and uh, they've got these little divots in here, which is great. So I'm going to pull from Lamian Medium with uh, my clean brush. And I'm going to do that first because uh, if I started with my blue, obviously it would, uh, it would definitely get uh, contaminated. So I'm going to pull a few, you know, just like the brushfuls, if you will, off of this here. Okay. And then I'll... Uh, clean her up here and then I'll go back into my uh, Gilliman blue 
and uh, I'll shake that up. A little bright with the lighting there, but you'll see it once I start mixing it in. So in the exact same spot, I'll mix equal parts of the uh, Gilliman blue here. And we want to do that because we don't want to necessarily glaze or tint the model. Um, oh, sorry, we want to tint the model. We don't want to glaze the whole thing. So as I mix it up, you can see that our Gilliman blue uh, gets a lot thinner and it's a lot more translucent because we basically cut it in half, but we didn't reduce the pigments down. Okay, so I'm going to pull from that and I'm going to stick that to the side here just so it's out of the way. And on our Griff Hound, make sure there's not too much on my brush, but I'm just going to work my way around. Now I'm going to be very careful not to get any on our uh, on, on the rest of the model here. Okay, so I'll let that dry for about four or five minutes or so, and then I'll come back with that same mixture, and I'll keep working my way uh, up so the color's a little stronger at the top. So what I'll do is the next time I'll do halfway to the head, and then I'll do just the head. So I might do two or three coats of this, but I want that blue tint to be carried uh, all the way through, getting a little stronger at the top and kind of gradiating lighter as we go down. So I'll give it five and I'll be right back to show you that. Okay, so I've come back and I'm just going to hit that bottom half there now, just add a little bit more strength. And you see, uh, as the paint runs down with gravity, I'm going to just add that in. Just make it a little more blue on the neck there. Now I've let the blue dry over top of the uh, of the fulgurite copper, and um, I did those successive shades. So did the whole thing, then did a little bit more here, then a little bit more here, uh, a little bit around the head, and I just did a well about three four layers, just really thin, and. I know it seems like it takes a lot of time, but it's it, you just slop it on and wait uh, only at a certain part, right? So it's it's actually pretty easy to do to layer these up. Now, um, I went in with the Fulgurite Copper again and just redid the tips of the ears because it's going to a gold to like a blue. So I made sure that as it got further away from the head that I picked up that, that gold there as well. Really like the way it looks. Um, it gives us a nice kind of golden metallic-y uh, blue, you get that kind of sheen on birds, and uh, yeah, I really, I really like the effect of it, anyways. Uh, and um, yeah, he's really coming together really well. Now, uh, really, all that's left on this guy here is um, we've got to do that uh, strap along the bottom. So I'm just going to go in with an overbrush of uh, Steel Legion drab, and it, uh, it's this is going to be super, super easy because I'm just I'm leaving all those low lights in there as uh, as we've seen before. You've seen I've gone, I don't know if you can see here, I've gone a little bit over with the gold, so I'm just going to tidy that up uh, with a nice kind of overbrush of the Steel Legion drab, uh, leaving all that depth and detail in there wherever possible. So let me clean up this gold. Yeah, it was a bit messy going on with this, so uh, always easier to repaint that uh, that detail on after the fact and kind of go around around the gold. And next up I'll be using the Carrick Stone just as an edge edge highlight um, to the to the Steel Legion drab really. And uh, just a very simple very fine uh, edging on it. This one might be a little bit easier to see. So I'm just going to go over the edge. Uh, just check the camera there. Okay perfect. Just gonna go over the edge uh, just like this and just touching with the very tip of the brush uh, you'll see that I'm not painting the whole time. I just kind of wave, wave back and forth here over top, just to kind of get it there. So just to give it a little bit of a, a visual highlight. Now the last step I'm going to do uh, painting wise is take the Fulgurite Copper and make sure that I've got um, just a little light edge highlight over top of um, the gold here on the symbols. So. Uh, I'll just tap the center of the comet and then just do a little tracing over the edge just to bring out that extra little bit of, of, of pop uh, for those metallics. And then I'll do that front plate as well, just going around the edges to keep it that little bit extra, little bit extra highlight there. 
So that draws us to a bit of a close with the painting. Um, one of the things that I want to kind of finish up with here is going to be this uh, Micron pen. I'm essentially going to black line uh, around the model. Now the model's an organic model for the most part, uh, which is nice, which means that we don't have a lot of kind of hard edges. But we do have edges in here, like for example, this, uh, that rivet there, we can use it to black line around uh, the little rivets. Um, we can also use it to kind of, wherever two colors meet, we can highlight and kind of black line that, that one space there. And what it does is it just provides a little bit of definition uh, for our model. Now any of the chain links, any of that, uh, we'll make sure we get in there and do as well. So anywhere where um, two colors meet is typically where I'll do it, or two textures meet. So uh, for example, we can see here the little, uh, you know, the little kind of hook and, 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 and buckle system here for the harness. Uh, we can make sure that that gets done. Uh, there's a very clear line between the flesh and the, the strapping, the belt that goes around. We'll get that. And it's not just the two colors, but anytime two textures meet, uh, for example, around the comet, we'll just grab around the head here, uh, just to highlight that head of the comet. Um, and I think it really does a good job of, of just kind of bringing out that, uh, that detail. And it's pretty low effort, really. It's, 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 it really adds a lot of character to your model with really not very much work at all. Okay, so I'll work my way around uh, wherever two colors meet and uh, wherever two textures meet. I'll make sure that I get this in. All right, with the black lining all completed up here, um, I uh, finished up the base here and I wanted to make sure that um, I waited until the very end. Um, you know, it's kind of optional, but I mean, I've already got the color. It's already part of the palette here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish off the nails on the uh, kind of the talons, the claws here of the Griff Hound. And I'm going to do that with Averland Sunset. Now, normally with uh, that, you know, I kind of painted or modeled the body after a, uh, a lion. And normally the claws would be black. Uh, but we've got so much um, kind of shading going on from the wash there um, that uh, black would just make it look like a, a you know just a bunch of black stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is use Averland Sunset, and with that, I'm just going to go uh, just over the nails uh, of the talons here, and I'm just going to just kind of call them out uh, by just tapping a little bit of color uh, just onto the top of the, the nails themselves. And all that's going to do is just call out that little bit of de extra detail uh, visually. It'll break up the color on the model just a little bit there. And if you're a little on the messy side for whatever reason, uh, or you want to mute the colors just a little bit more, um, what you can do is just take a little bit of extra wash and just tuck it in between the different claws there, just to add a little bit of that definition back. All right, so uh, taking a look at kind of the final product here, uh, we can see that, you know, he's got lots of personality. He's looking really, really kind of cool. Uh, the color scheme goes up really nice against like, like a greener kind of backdrop or table or what have you. Um, nice contrast with uh, the base. I love the blue, the way the blue turned out, that nice kind of peacocky, metallic-y blue. The contrast of the beak against the blue is great. Um, and you can use any other uh, of the glazes to get you different types of birds, like green if you want kind of a parody type scheme and all that. But that little bit of metallic underneath just really adds a little bit extra sheen to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, really nice. Uh, it's gonna go great with the rest of the, uh, with his, you know, kind of master there and, and kind of the rest of the Griffhounds if you've got a pack of them. All right, and that's it. So if you've liked this video, please hit that like button. Uh, it really helps get the channel and the video out there and it helps me out a lot. Uh, if you want more videos like this, 
absolutely hit that subscribe button. It'll give you notifications of all of our future videos. And uh, yeah, we'll do a whole bunch more like this. Uh, we're going to finish off his Lord Veritant buddy and, uh, you know, just kind of finish that off as a little piece there, which will be great. And uh, we'll throw those into the army. It'll look awesome. And uh, yeah, it was great putting this together. I had a ton of fun putting them in. Uh, it looks really nice. It's a little bit different than all the other kind of Stormcast models because he's you know, he's, he's a little more organic. He's not this big, hard kind of armor type thing. So, um, yeah, going to be awesome having, uh, having it out there. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video.